So I was literally 99% done with my video, guys. Rendering was done. I was about to upload it. And boom, the rascal news came. Blood and Spitfire have agreed to a deal for the Dallas Field to acquire Rascal. Oh my god, crazy news out of nowhere. Who could have expected this? Dallas Field finally making a move that makes sense. They're picking up a strong projectile player. Rascal and Effect are going to be an insane DPS duo. This is crazy. This changes absolutely everything for the Dallas Field. I mean, if it wasn't for Profit being so goddamn good, this guy, Rascal, would be a star in the league. He would be profit basically maybe not as good but he would be killing it right now on the genji he would be killing it on the soldier this guy was so prolific as a dps player back when he was on kong du panthera during the run to the finals in apex season three where they lost to lunatic high three to four rascal was honestly amazing he was extremely flexible he would basically fill that role of the player that just played everything on dps while bird ring sat on tracer and he was no slouch at all yeah, Bird Ring was absolutely amazing, but so was Rascal. He put in massive a work for that team, and he was a huge reason why they made it to the finals that season, and he was looked at as one of the best DPS in the entire world. A lot of people even thought he was better than Bird Ring, and one thing that was for sure is Bird Ring and Rascal, especially during their peak in Season 3, were considered the best DPS duo in the entire world, and there was no competition at one point. And oh my god. I literally, so I click the Reddit thread now, and the first comment I read is from TISRobin311. Now Rascal has to refriend XQC, LMAO. Oh my god, that is so good. That is the funniest thing I've, <laughs> that is so funny, dude. Everybody seemed to have forgotten about that. Huge comment coming through there by TISRobin. The ma this man's actually a legend, by the way. He translates literally everything on Reddit from Korean to English. <laughs> I, just, I literally can't. That's so funny. And the next comment, the hardened trade says, so many DPS honestly didn't think that was the problem, but maybe there is another half of this trade. That's a good point. They do have a lot of DPS on their roster. That's Siegel, Rascal, both kind of on that projectile role. Then we got AKM and Taimu playing that hardcore hit scan role. Then that leaves effect kind of off on the tracer. So a lot of DPS players, total of five. In response, I have a rift says, is effect proficient on Genji? I can see Rascal fitting in with fuel, but this makes me even more confused about the ACAM pickup. Really curious as to what the other half of the trade is. There must be one. Now, basically to point out effect proficient on Genji, that's basically unneeded now, my man. Rascal, like I've been saying, is amazing he is that prolific genji player he is basically everything that dallas fuel have needed him and effect are going to do insane works on tracer genji i am excited to see that as to the a cam pickup honestly i agree with you man it makes me even more confused about it too since him and taimu are basically identical when it comes to that role but in my opinion i think time is a little bit better mainly because he is a bit more flexible he can go on to heroes like the junk rat and i just don't think a cam is better than time i really don't i've played against them both a lot they have insane aim, but I think Taimu really does have better aim. So, I don't know, maybe he's been toxic lately and they want to phase him out and put AKM in. Not sure what the deal is there. Then on to the second half of this trade. I am very curious to learn about the rest of this trade as well. This is absolutely insane. Ah, the speculation running through my head, I have no idea what's going on. I just, I want to know. So if you're a Dallas Fuel fan, you should be excited as hell right now, guys. This is an amazing acquisition from the Dallas Fuel. This puts their roster at 10 players now, a total of 5 DPS players, 2 main tanks, and 3 supports. They're honestly getting pretty close to having a 12-man roster. I think to top off this roster, they need to go out and pick up another really good support player, preferably a Korean, as well as another Korean off tank. If they do that, then they can have a 12-man roster, two different sets, and they can start doing inner scrims. And I think this would really help improve the team, as well since Mickey has been good near the end of Stage 1, but still very inconsistent. And a Korean support could really add a lot more depth to these supports on this roster. So, again guys, crazy deal. This just literally came up out of nowhere when this video was basically done. And you know I had to stop my, and you know I had to stop my render and put this in there. So the video is going to be in probably an hour or two late today. But hey, it's worth it. This is crazy news. And also, guys, real quick, if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. I'm working my ass off to get a video out every single day, guys. I enjoy doing this. And if you just love my content and you haven't yet, 
please do consider it. And let's go ahead and hop into the what was supposed to be the first topic of the day, which is DeFran. Is he actually joining the Florida Mayhem? What is going on, guys? This is crazy. Sometimes in life, guys, you get what you want. And with this situation, we might be getting exactly what we want. Now, I'm not saying that 100% it's happening, but the odds from yesterday have skyrocketed. I thought the speculation was going rampant yesterday. Today has intensified even more. Will DeFran actually be joining the Florida Mayhem? Will he compete in the Overwatch League or will he compete on an academy team? Yes, that is also an option. DeFran could be joining the Florida Academy roster. Now, I think that is less likely of an option. I think more than likely it would be the Overwatch League team because I think DeFran does have multiple offers. There are a few teams that are at, you know, sort of the bottom of the league and could really improve with the addition of DeFran. Obviously, some of those teams do include the San Francisco Shock, Dallas Fuel, but makes a little less sense for them since they already kind of have that role filled by multiple players. San Francisco, they have IDDQD, then Dante, then Sinatra, Baby Bay. They kind of all play that tracer hit scan role. So picking up DeFran wouldn't make much sense, but hey, you know, never put it past them. They already do have five hit scan players. You never know. Then for the Dallas Fuel, they have Taimu, Effect, and then recently they announced that they will be picking up AKM. So some more hit scan players that would play a similar role to DeFran. Although DeFran and Siegel and DeFran and Effect DPS duo sounds actually really nice to me. But more than likely, what makes the most sense of it all is DeFran joining the Florida Mayhem. I absolutely did not plan on making two videos in a row mainly about DeFran and the Florida Mayhem. I really did not. But after today's news coming out from multiple sources, DeFran legitimately might be joining the Florida Mayhem, whether it is their academy team or their Overwatch League team. Let's go ahead and take a look at this clip of XQC saying that DeFran is probably joining the Florida Mayhem. Did you lose your French accent from talking English all the time? Yes, I did. It. BTW Gross Absolutely. Love to live turn, it, turn it to Rihanna? Yeah, we'll do it. Jay's, if I bucked, what's up? I did it. Yeah, I did. Uh, just speaking French all the time. Is it fun on Florida? Most likely, yeah. Okay, if we lose the, if we lose the games, we'll lose a lot of points, so can't lose. Excalibur. And let me be honest with you guys here. So yeah, it was kind of like a casual leak, you know, he just like slipped it in there. It wasn't like this big thing like, oh yeah, guys, so DeFran is definitely on Florida Mayhem. It was more like, oh yeah, DeFran's probably joining Florida Mayhem, you know, nonchalantly. So that kind of even makes me believe it a little bit more. But then it's like these mind games. You never know if it's a debate. Sure, XQC might be debating us all. He really could be. But if you take a look at XQC's leaking history... He is pretty consistent and a reliable source. If I do remember correctly, he did accurately give hints about the Boston roster along with the LA Gladiators roster. So I wouldn't just 100% assume he is debating us. XQC is actually a reliable source when it comes to Overwatch League leaks. Now again, he didn't specify whether it was the Overwatch League or an academy team. Either could be possible. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on to this now. So DeFran tweeted yesterday that he would be taking two day off. Uh, he was doing some type of stream thing, 10 hours every single day. He said, screw it, I'm gonna take a break tomorrow. That's fine and dandy, all right. You know, nothing really serious there to look into. But today he makes this tweet, he does these eye emojis. Now, what, you know, what are the eyes about, DeFran? You know, let us know, what are you thinking? Now where it gets really interesting is, the first response to this is from a guy named Joe, now who actually works with the Florida Mayhem. He's one of their chief officers. He is in charge of building teams, managing them, putting them together, making sure everything is in place. He is the lead of their academy roster, as well as their Overwatch League roster. And he, and he gives the eyes back to DeFran. And that's not it. They go back and forth again with two sets of eyes. So definitely something interesting coming out from Joe and DeFran. That 5% definitely jumped up to at least 50% in my book. Sure, there's no hard evidence anywhere, so all I can really do is go off of my gut feeling. And in this situation, guys, I just find it a little odd that DeFran would be debating like this with Joe. There's really no reason that they would get together and, you know, decide to debate together unless they saw the Reddit thread and were like, hey, let's just mess with some people. I'm going to tweet some eyes, you tweet some eyes back. But really, how likely is that? 
honestly, why would one of them reach out to the other and say, hey, let's mess with some people, let's troll them? I don't think they would do that. I think that there was some form of contact between DeFran and Joe, whether it was that Florida Mayhem was contacting him, asking him if he was willing to trial, or DeFran contacting Joe, asking him if he could get a trial or if they were interested in looking for him. Some form of contact, and then something snowballed from that. He either got a trial, they wanted to sign him, they were trying to figure out what they wanted to do, and that led to this. Because I just don't see that they would randomly get together. There's no reason. That just doesn't make sense to me. So I definitely think there is something behind this. Whether that, you know, DeFran is either joining the academy team or the actual team in the league. Or they did some type of trial. There was just definitely some way of them getting in contact together. And they became friends because of that. And then they decided to do this. DeFran wasn't just some stranger to Joe. And they got together and decided to do this. There's no way. I am completely writing that off. Yeah, I could be wrong, but that is what my gut is saying. That is the feeling I have right now. And like I said earlier in this video, guys, I truly did not intend to make two videos in a row about the same topic. Just that 5% shot up so much to something that was actually possible. But like this topic went from pretty much complete speculation to like now there's some concrete things that point to DeFran potentially joining the Florida Mayhem. And with my feeling, I think it's more than likely that he is joining Florida Mayhem in some form. I think something has definitely gone on between these two parties. Now moving on to some actual legitimate news that came out of the Florida Mayhem. They did tease yesterday that they were going to be adding three new people to the team. And today that announcement did come out with the first person joining Florida Mayhem. And it's actually not a player. It is a staff member. They have added an assistant coach. His name is R2 D-E-R. I'm not too sure how you pronounce it. I'm just going to go with R2 Durr. And here's what the head coach of the Florida Mayhem Mineral had to say on the addition of R2 Durr. Coach R2 Durr brings a wealth of experience to the team. Having played and coached Overwatch professionally for MIG Frost, Kong Du Panthera, Newbie, and most recently Meta Athena. It's difficult to find individuals who can understand the game from a player's point of view while also having a coaching pedigree. He brings an Eastern perspective on the game, which will be invaluable as we continue to widen our horizons. I am personally very excited to work with R2 Durr to ensure optimal preparation for our players. So it seems like Mineral is excited to bring on another staff member, which is great. And I also agree with him. I think it's going to be awesome for them having that Eastern perspective. And the reason why we say Eastern is because he did coach in China and in Korea. So he has a lot of experience in multiple regions. And that'll definitely be effective combined with the Western knowledge that Mineral and the Florida Mayhem already have. So as mentioned, he was a player. He did play a little bit for Kong Du Panthera in late 2016. After that, he moved to China and coached Team Newbie. And most recently, he coached Meta Athena. So he does have a good background. All right, so I know something for me that is very awesome and exciting that I love to see is when celebrities or community figures, just big names in general, support esports and specifically Overwatch. So many of you have probably heard of him and even listened to his music. T-Pain is someone who actually has supported Overwatch for a while now. If you don't know, he does stream from time to time. And now that I think about it, he actually streams a decent amount. And he's even someone who has hosted my stream multiple times. So shout out to T-Pain for those hosts. So as you guys know, in my last video, I talked a bit about Jaguri and how she is going to be joining the Shanghai Dragons. And it's awesome for females and Overwatch esports in general. So T-Pain took to Twitter and said this about the topic. Yes, get it girl. The world needs more news like this at Play Overwatch. Someone of this stature coming out and supporting Overwatch League in general is amazing. But also supporting it like this is really cool, man. It shows that T-Pain actually follows the Overwatch League and stays up to date with the latest news. There's not a lot of females at the highest level of esports, to be honest with you guys. And I'm not saying this to try to disrespect females in any way at all. I think it is awesome that Jaguri is joining the Overwatch League. And I hope that more females do in the near future. Just in general, there isn't a lot of girls in esports. I think there has been one female player to play in the League of Legends LCS. I think she shortly played for the Renegades in like Season 4. Just in general, there's not a lot of females in esports at the highest levels. I think there has been one player to ever play in the LCS that was a female, which was on the Renegades in like Season 4, but I am pretty sure she's the only one. And then for other esports, I can't really think of any off the top of my head. I know there are some pretty damn good all-female CSGO teams, but 
but there's just not a ton of them. And if you are a female and you want to make it in the Overwatch League, give it your all, man. Do not be discouraged. Anybody can make it. Doesn't matter if you are a guy or girl. If you put in the work, you have the correct mindset and talent, you will make it to the Overwatch League, and that's that. And again, that's not just to females, to anybody. Do not be discouraged at all. If you put in the time, the effort, you work your ass off and you're focused on the right things, you can make it to unbelievable heights, guys. And that's basically my little motivation speech for the day, guys. Shoot for the stars. That's all I got to say. All right, and lastly, real quick, guys, I want to talk about my channel and the direction it's heading in in the future. So basically, if you are a loyal follower and watch my videos every day, I want to first of all say thank you. I really do appreciate that. I work very hard on them, and I'm doing my absolute best to deliver the content you guys want. Whether it's funny, entertaining, or something very serious. I'm just trying to deliver the stuff that I think you guys want to see. And also, I do try my best to do stuff that I think is fun to me, which, you know, is like predictions, speculation, all that stuff. Basically, I had this idea, since you guys were so interactive yesterday in my comment section about what you wanted to see, whether it was the Emong, is he good enough for the Overwatch League, Shatter 2K, how will teams fare with the Mercy meta, I have decided to introduce something new to this channel, which is called You Pick It Sundays, guys. So every single Saturday on my video, I want you guys in my comments to let me know what you want me to make on Sunday. And the highest upvoted comment by midnight on Saturday is the video I will make for Sunday. So it's going to be very similar to the video I did yesterday where you guys commented down and basically the number one idea is going to be done on Sunday. And as for yesterday, like I said, since there was so much support in the comments, the top three voted, which were very close, was is Emong good enough for the Overwatch League? Is Shatter 2K good enough for the Overwatch League? And how do I think the teams will fare with the new meta and the Mercy Nurse? Where are the standings going to be? So go ahead in this video, guys. I'm going to give you one more chance to vote on which one you want to see. And that will be the video tomorrow. And that's basically it, guys. Like I said, if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. Especially if you watch my videos daily. There's absolutely no reason not to subscribe. Just click that button, boys. Be sure to follow my social medias. You can add me on Snapchat for live updates. And I'm basically out of here, guys. Peace.